Hello everyone, I'm Keenan 47 aka Wolfkeen, and welcome to the Wolf Podcast, where we talk about the 21st episode of Persona 5 The Animation. You can call me Noir. With me today is... Hello everyone, I am DM Mikami, so it's DM Porn 3000. Hey everyone, this is Florin G. Hey everyone, this is Mario Family 15 aka that guy that must ask Dean a very important question. Did you re- did you remember to put your phone on mute this time? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh shit! <laughs> oh, he did forget. <laughs> Thanks uh, for reminding me, Zach. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <You> pass. <laughs> oh my god. Well, well, also said that would be a good joke. <laughs> well, well yeah, <laughs> yeah. Why well, didn't think he would use it this quickly? <laughs> Way to blow your load early. He used his trump card. Uh, <laughs> I'll reveal your that... true form. Did you finish the episode, Zach? Hmm? Did you finish, Did you the, finish episode? the episode? Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. Good. Oh, okay. Good. Good, so we don't have to run it out. Also, just to let you know, if you hear a fan in the background, it's because there's a heat wave currently running through New York right now, so it's hot. But anyway. Uh, uh, I bet it must be hell. Yeah, it is hell. It was hell just to get like do any kind of recording. But anyways, before we start, before we say anything, any kind of comparisons that we make to the game or the animation are purely done for analytical reasons. And just to give like a synopsis of this episode, it's literally the beginning and end of the Akumara arc. Like I'm not even joking. As soon as it begins, it ends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, this was a fast one i have to say <laughs> oh yeah this was super fast and we also get to the we also get to the part of okumura's mental shutdown from as we saw the person in the black mask how, how ironic that one of the longest palaces in the game is the shortest in the anime i know yes, right <laughs> we didn't I, even have that whole crusher time limit thing that they had to run through and, thank god and not to mention, we also didn't get to see one of the more important elements, but that'll be saved for comparisons and differences. So for now, Dean, give your general thoughts of the episode. Um, well, this came as a total surprise for me because I think this is the one of the parts of the game that felt pretty slow to me, and to my knowledge, apparently isn't the most well-liked thing, especially for fans of Persona 5. So I was kind of curious on how they would actually handle it, and... They handled it pretty well, in my opinion, and they also included some little tidbits here and there that I actually really liked, because some parts of it actually talked about Haru's backstory, which was desperately needed because some folks like myself took too long to actually get to Haru's social link. Yeah, like our gra- like we learned about our grandfather here about how before like you know before like he passed away he had a he had like a short like a short number of cafes and his whole idea was all for a smile. Yeah, which is funny because he basically went from LeBlanc to fucking Starbucks. <laughs> that's quite an or no not starbucks mcdonald's not even because at least like he even gave stuff for free like he oh even, yeah like he even gave meals for free if a person couldn't like didn't have the money for it but needed it that's hilarious and how or kind of sad also that we went from a very kind old man to just the most uh, greedy asshole on the fucking planet <laughs> also kid haru is adorable Kid Haru is adorable. Yeah, and Kid see, Haru is precious, and I want to hug her. Yeah, and Haru see, was great in this episode. It, mm-hmm. Yeah, she really was. And seeing the cafe itself was really cool as well, because that's I keep saying this all the time. That's something that the game was missing heavily. Was here's the thing: we all know the old whole idea, show don't tell. Unfortunately, the game did suffer that. It didn't show a lot of the stuff that they were telling us. Yeah, which it could be just like. Um, limitations in the game itself, which is why I was hoping that the anime would actually, you know, show more of the things that we were told about, which this episode did, and which I'm totally gr- glad for. Definitely. Um, so, how many so far have we seen the kid versions of the Persona 5 folks? We got Yusuke, we got Makoto, we got Haru. Um, that's about it. Yeah, that's, that's about everyone? it. I mean, All right. I, I think we got a passing glance of younger Futaba, but I don't know if that counts. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I don't think we saw like a kid Futaba, so mm-hmm. we didn't see yeah. kid. Um, we didn't see kid Ryuji. 
Or Kid On. Or Kid On. Or Kid Ren. Well, then again, what Ren. would Kid Ren even look like, considering that his story has no connection with anything that's going on around here, which they still haven't fucking explored. Dude, Kid uh, Ren would be nothing but just a giant poof of hair. <laughs> I would love to see that. I love to see Kid Ren just for the giant poof of hair. You know the so only reason, the, he has only, an The only reason I'm bringing this up is because me and my mom are currently watching the animation, and we just got through episode eight, and she literally say, shared the same criticism that we had, which was they didn't talk about his backstory. And I literally <laughs> said to my mom, like, yep, and they still have it to this day. God fucking damn it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Anyways, is there anything else you wanted to add, Dean? Uh, no, I think we're gonna. I'm gonna talk more about the the comparisons and whatnot. <laughs> go ahead, Cole. Okay. So speaking of Ren, um, Ren, let's go to an amusement park. Also, Ren gets sick on the rides. <laughs> yeah, like he did not look like he was having fun on the roller coaster. <laughs> no, no, he didn't. I, I, no, he I, I, didn't. I also completely love the fact that. That, that on the picture, Futaba's hair is covering Yusuke's face. <laughs> <laughs> like, Odo's whole face was covered by her hair. Oh, yeah, my yeah, yeah, almost his whole face was covered by uh, Futaba's hair. Futaba's hair is so magical, it even clipped through the thing well, about then again, her hair, place. Well, then again, her hair is pretty long. Mm-hmm. Let's be fair, Futaba's hair is pretty long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, in all seriousness, um, I think I've made my hatred of this palace known a lot over the past couple of podcasts. So the fact that they skipped through it so quickly is kind of a relief. But at the same time, it does feel like we missed a lot, a, a lot of uh, important details surrounding exactly how bad Hakumura Foods treats its employees. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only glimpses of that, or at least any of the major hints, is just quoted from his dialogue. That's mm-hmm. all. Just yeah. how much he treats everyone like shit. Yeah. Again, it's more of the whole show don't tell thing. That's unfortunately a drawback for the this episode. Only, the only glimpse we saw was actually from the previous episode when they first entered the palace. That, oh, that was yeah. it. That was it. Like we'll get into we'll get more into that in comparisons and differences, but there's one scene in particular that me and Cole know about that we want to bring up. Really? <laughs> Do you know which scene I'm talking about that they removed from the palace? Uh, Let's just say yes. <laughs> God damn it, Cole. Uh, we were just talking about it not even 30 minutes ago. I'm bo- tired, and I'm still thinking of your pony fic. Cole, <laughs> <laughs> yes. he's, ta- he's talking about the boss fights. Not the boss fight, you dingus! <laughs> it's in the game. It's in the anime. It's in the anime. I'm talking about the scene they uh, removed that's not in the fucking anime. Okay, okay, okay. Well, okay, okay. Before the boss fight happened. Not even. Before the space section. <laughs> oh. God damn it. We'll get into it in comparison. It's cold. In the moment that we do, I will be like, oh, it's that. And then you'll just want to beat the... Not beat me up, but slap me upside the head. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do something. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> oh, my God. This is, the, this is the Wolf Podcast, people, filled with people that are completely incompetent and otherwise, and this includes me. Sweet, we're the Phantom well... Thieves, then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ouch. Well, we definitely don't have a Makoto, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we really are the core four, then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Plus Yusuke. Plus Yusuke. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Anyways, Cole, is there anything else you wanted to add? Um... Oh, wow. Um... To be honest, not really. I kind of said my my piece is sh- just short, simple, and to the point. Um, to be honest, I think I got more enjoyment out of the near end of this episode where they were hanging out at Destinyland. I don't know what it is, but it's just that the with the anime, the anime just does a much better job of showing, yes, these people are friends and they aren't just conveniently hanging out with each other. Yeah, exactly. I, mm-hmm. I, uh, we, we've said that so many times and I still agree with that. Yeah. I'll just say Ah, Destinyland, aka, AKA not Disney World. You know, Destinyland <laughs> has been referenced in previous Shin Megami Tensei games. No. Yeah, uh, it has. 
I have no, I don't know that because this is the first one I played. I think they did reference it in Persona Four. I could be wrong. No, they referenced it in Digital Devil Saga. Oh, okay. So, oh wow, they actually. So, Digital Devil it. Saga is apparently in another multiverse in the entire Shin Megami Tensei multiverse, and we were not going to get into that. Yeah, so. that's a that's a whole different can of worms that honestly, <laughs> we're not smart enough for. Yeah, it's perspective. The... If you thought Kingdom Hearts' story was confusing, <laughs> don't try to understand the Shin Megami Tensei timeline. Or yeah, the l- as a whole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Trust us. Y- your brain will thank you for this later. Mm-hmm. Just, just, just think of them as five fantasy games where they're all standalone. Except they aren't. Except they really they're are. Not unfortunately. really. Unfortunately, Except not really. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, Zach. Or fire for that matter. <laughs> anyway. Oh, there was one thing, though, I did want to bring up. All right. Okay, like, for me, the episode felt like it was moving a little bit too fast, but I love the music, the remix of, I think, the boss theme when they actually got, did fight Akumara, finally. It, it actually reminds me of P4 animation because they did have a sort of remix the music for Mitsuo during that fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's... And then they re- and then they retroactively used it in the golden version. Mhm. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember that. Yeah, they... I remember. I remember like playing the original, and it was the generic boss fight and that music, and then I played golden, and it's like, oh, this is this is eight bit. Yeah, I, yeah, it. I know. Cool. It made me laugh my ass off because I'm like, dude, they should do this with Akumara. Like in the when they make a. Oh, uh, like an expanded version of Persona Five. They should really use like a remixed version of Blooming Villain. Yeah, that's Ooh. got that more sci-fi-ish feel to it, and all that. That would be rad. It <laughs> would, and it would make that fucking thirty-minute endurance fight oh, less God. of a drag. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna bring this up in comparisons, but this is my least favorite boss fight in the game. <laughs> Dude. Honestly, as much as I hate the dungeon itself, I actually think that for me this is probably one of my favorite boss fights, just simply because of the fact it feels like a huge goddamn bull rush. I do actually, I do actually, I do actually like this boss fight too, primarily because it fits his character. He's not the kind of person that does anything on his own. He literally works off of the backs of everyone else. Okay, you guys didn't spend time on hard mode trying to deal with this guy, and then get randomly hit with the fucking burger. <laughs> well, 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 well. Well, Dean, that, well, Dean, that was your own decision. To well, it <laughs> sucked. I hate boss <laughs> fights like this. Oh, boy. Oh, you poor soul. <laughs> oh, I and we got I, the I, return of the all-out attack. Yeah, One of them we, looked very we, nice, and that was Haru's. The other did not look so much nice, and that was Morgana's. Morgana's <laughs> looked so awkward. It's like two animation companies did it. <laughs> Yeah, it's. Uh, I, 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 I will say this about both the all out attacks. At least they finally colorized the background this time. And they don't just try to cut back into the actual scene itself like they did with episode 5. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. When was the last time they did an all out attack? Episode 8, I think. Uh, wait, no, not 8. It's earlier than that. Oh, uh, it's been a uh, while. It's honestly been I, a while. I, 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 right? I want to say they haven't. I, I want to say they haven't done one since the Kamashita fights. No, it's been way later than that. It's been way later than that. Yeah, I think they kind of had one when they were... when they first brought Yusuke to Mementos. I believe that's the case. Uh Either that or when they... Wasn't there one for Nakanohara? Yeah, that one. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, that was... Because that was the first time they actually had, like, the background that has, like, the shows over for Joker. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, anyways, let's move on to Zach with his general thoughts. Okay. Well... Well, uh, well, to start things off, uh, 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 usually I'm just like, yeah, I was so right this, but, but man, man, I, I feel so wrong when I say I called it. I called it because best, you know, last week's podcast, I think even the week before, I was kind of like, what? You know, well, no, no, just last week's podcast. I was, uh, I was like, watch it all be a, uh, just one episode. I really hope it isn't that. Just like, oh, it actually just... Yeah, and we I said, don't it. jinx it, and look what happened. It fucking happened. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Zach. Thanks, thanks Zach. Zach. <laughs> no, seriously, thank you, Zach, because I hate this dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Um, uh, 
the the uh, the other thing uh, I want to mention. Um, shoot, what did I want to uh, mention? You guys were talking about the things I wanted to talk about. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, that's, well, that's what happens when you're second to last. Look at me. I'm the last one, so... Oh, I remember. I, 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 I remember. Uh, you guys were talking about, like, and, you know, uh, the all attacks and all that stuff. Um, I know I'll bring you some more comparisons, but the boss fights with Akuma himself in the anime, I actually, I actually do like a lot. Yeah, it felt like an actual fight. Yeah, and one of my... Fa and one of my... Fa I, I can't remember the persona. Uh, well, I can't. I don't know how to say his name. But but one of my favorite parts was, was you know was that persona, um, at uh, tossing the executive director at Akumura. Oh, yeah, that, that was, was hilarious. That was funny. <laughs> that was like full. That was like a Streets of Rage kind of move. <laughs> yeah, I know of the persona that you're thinking of. It's like I think it starts with a G. Uh, it's a really long name. If yeah, it, right. it, yeah, it is, but... Uh, Phantom Road Cross or something like that. Yeah, I don't remember uh, the name. Uh, I, I also like the fact, just, just to fit more just to fit, uh, more of, like, uh, uh, a horror story, uh, it, it, it's uh, uh, it's her that, that finishes off the executive director and such. Which makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, then again, it's always been the character related to the palace that kind of does the finishing blow. Yeah, see Yusuke and Makoto. Uh, Makoto fucking punched the piggy, so... Yeah, punched... Uh, like, just Falcon punched it. Uh, sure. unless, you, unless your name is Ryuji, he didn't get that. Well, then I again, well, then again, On and Ryuji are connected to Kamoshida. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, then again, Joker was the one who dealt the fight finishing blow, technically, in that episode. And uh, there was Joker as well when dealing with... Uh, uh, what was it? Cognitive Wakaba. Oh. Uh, 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 but uh, also the other thing I like, uh, since you guys brought uh, flashbacks earlier, uh, I also I also really like the flashback that happens at the amusement park itself, where she said her fire cried uh, tears of joy. Oh yeah, because he got the business. Mm-hmm. And what a dick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What a dick. <laughs> oh 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 oh! I know I know another thing. Uh, one thing I want to say. Uh, can I just say, okay, okay, uh, okay, I, I, I know the animation and, like, Persona 5, the animation doesn't look that great for the most part, but, you know, we don't bring it up a lot of times because it's not really necessary, but, oh boy, this episode was definitely not the prettiest. No, it wasn't. We were just talking about mm. how awkward Morgana's all-out attack finisher looks, and... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and, and, oh, and I also just need to say this. You know, at the end of the episode, when Akumura has the mental shutdown and Morgana says, I don't know, why is he smiling? Yes. <laughs> that was weird. And you can't say because he's a cat, because they've done more <laughs> emotive stuff with him. Yeah, they see have. Last episode, see last mm -hmm. week's episode? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Literally. So he can't do sadness, just apparently not in front of a guy who's literally oozing out uh, out of his eyes. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, like, like, oh man, there's like that scene was even worse. That was even worse compared to the game itself. But I'll get into that in comparisons. Uh, uh, uh but, but of course, and, I, and what uh, I mean, yeah. and what I mean worse, I mean in a good way. I don't mean it in a bad way. Uh, but, but because the animation itself, I think the perfect, I think like the perfect example of the animation looking bad is those few seconds where they're in space. Yeah, that that Ugh. just yeah. that just that just oh, looks, that yeah. just looks like a couple of JPEG pictures put on the scroll motion. I was like, Ooh, this looks bad. When like li like awful. literally, I would love someone to just like like send me that and i could just put that across but i can't do it now or in time of me uploading this so i'll just put like a random picture flying by that's what it looks like that's what it uh, honestly looks like uh, 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 but, but i guess the more uh, and the other uh, most well animation thing where it kind of looks bad is uh is immediately after they defeat uh uh, uh akumra you just see their faces and they have no detail on them <laughs> <laughs> they have no detail. The only one who has any detail is Morgana oh, in the boy. horror. Room. But um, if I if I could do if I could do my thoughts on the episode, uh, sure, go for it. Mm -hmm. Um, I was holding off on telling yeah most of what I thought, but I'm actually in the middle on this episode. Uh. Um, the reason why I'm in the middle with this episode is I felt it went by way too quickly. I get maybe why because Akumara's palace has like 
far too much for its own good, and I will acknowledge that. But I felt like they kind of rushed it. I felt like they kind of went a little bit too fast. I mean, they went through his palace in the span of a day. A mm-hmm. day, it, like a like not even sorry, not a day, but you get what I'm saying. An episode. This is the quickest palace start and palace end that we've ever seen. Even if it's you want, super jarring. I know. It's like I know some people might try to say, no, the palace technically started last episode. Not really, because they were immediately gated before they can even get further in. Like they were mm-hmm. literally at the entrance, and it's like, nope, can't go further. Just I'm like more, in the game. Yeah, more, I more consider this episode the beginning of that of that palace, and literally as soon as it's it's like blink and it's over. That's how I felt. That's how I felt with this palace. It's like one minute we're in it, next minute treasure's taken, it's over. Like what? Uh, yeah. That was part of the the jarring thing that I had with uh, this episode in particular because if. Even going by the game, there were a lot more set pieces and a lot more things that you could have seen from this palace because, yeah, the palace experience is exactly the best, I will admit that, but it had some pretty great stuff in it, especially telling for Okumura and how he treats his workers. It's very well done. So they only glimpse that in, like, some instances. We didn't even go to the boiler room. Yeah, you know what it feels like? Uh, it feels like one of those things where it's just like you do not want to play through this, but but uh, but it feels like the kind of thing that it would be interesting to watch in motion and animation. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, I have to agree. Like as much as I joke that yay we got through this very quickly because I despise this palace in the game, there's a lot of context that we learn about exactly how badly Akumara runs Akumara Foods inside this palace. And I can honestly say, as someone who kind of not really works in fast food, but at least in retail, you gotta see this shit. And this actually (laughs) nicely transitioned us into the comparisons and differences. The biggest difference that they made, because they made this palace go by so quickly, they actually got rid of the scene where we see the dismantled workers. Basically, when the Phantom Thieves fight a few of the, of the workers and beat them, we see their dismantled remains being put into a boiler and being made into fuel to keep the Akumara Foods thing going. Yeah, that's what I brought up, because one of the things that I remember the most out of this palace was the boiler room. <laughs> yeah, and that scene just, like, just strengthened Haru's resolve in stopping her father. Like, that was, like, the final push, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was the thing. It's just, like, this whole palace, because we barely get to see, like, Okumura and his actions, you know, actually, like, doing it in front of people, uh, like, indirectly uh, mistreating his workers and all that, or mostly directly. Uh, is that considered for both? I'm not sure. It can work but, for both. Yeah. It. The, but the point is, is that a lot of this palace really emphasizes so much on why Okumura is not a good person and why Haru is so strengthened to actually, well, take him on for that reason. It, it was one of her driving motivations, even though I still don't get how she unlocks her persona at the beginning. But, you know, well, the only theory that me and Cole really came to was that it's like it's her sense of it's her sense of justice that kind of awoken her to her power but because she wasn't fully like she didn't have the full resolve yet she wasn't able to fully unlock its abilities only partially yeah Um, like a lot of the persona awakens endings in persona 5 are basically by giving into what you want by admitting what you want most often with a rebellious spirit the thing that you desire the most and for Haru, it wasn't so much wanting to make her stop her father and make him a better person. It was the fact that she wanted to beat the shit out of her fiance. <laughs> yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. And even then, like she kept saying, she had like a certain sense of justice. But if you notice, even in the real world, she was still being basically like controlled by the adults. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was still uh, allowing. She was still allowing herself to be controlled by the adults. Whereas, if you notice, with every other character that fully awakened, after they awoken, they pretty much no longer allowed themselves to be controlled by the adults. Yeah, and that is fair. That's part of the thing that I actually like. Going back to when we stated on how much that we think this episode is rushed, it kind of also emphasizes the point for Haru's case in particular because. Yeah. The the whole point about her, like, oh, her persona is not strong, is at full strength. No, we, so we'll keep her in the back. 
a couple of seconds later, she's kicking ass with her persona and bringing out her uh, milady mini gun. It would have been better. It would have been. It would have Go ahead, go ahead. And, and it's just like, well, that felt pointless. <laughs> yeah, it would have been better if they got at least somewhat into the palace. Maybe, like, you know, to the, maybe up to the point of fighting the workers, you know, before the boiler room. And maybe at that point, that's when she fully awakens. When, you know, she finally sees, like, the atrocities of her father and then actually sees her father at one point. Yeah, I think they should have just, you know, changed it up a bit because... It was still something that I didn't get out of the game, and it's even worse here in the anime, I feel. Yeah, and I, for me, a lot of it actually comes less from the, the palace itself, and actually more from the fact that you do run into Morgana and Haru in Mementos. And Mementos is very dangerous to navigate, so I find it hard for me to believe that Morgana was piggybacking Haru the entire time they were doing Mementos requests. Unless they, yeah. were, doing, unless they were doing the lower floors. I guess, but it's still sworn with shadows, so... Exactly. Mm -hmm. Unless she's still able to defend herself in some kind of way, like, she's still able to fight, but just not with her persona. But even then, oh, uh, what's the best way to put it? Persona 3 D Persona 3's movie does this the best way possible. Like, you know, the Personas are meant to be trump cards, but they need to rely on their own natural ability as well. I'm guessing yeah. that's what they were trying to imply, that she was relying on her own natural ability because she hasn't fully awoken to her persona, but at the same time, that's stretching it. There is a big missed opportunity for actually Haru showing off that her, you know, her weaponry, because yeah. she has the freaking best weapons. She yeah, has she, has a, she has a goddamn grenade launcher. And an <laughs> axe. <laughs> and an axe. Oh, 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 also, uh, this isn't this is really uh, uh, a comparison, but I might as well bring this, uh, bring this up. I, I like the CG when it came to the robots, they're perfectly they fit well for CG, but oh my gosh, Akuma looks so obviously CG when he sits in his chair. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I, 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 I like the robots though. So yeah, I, I also need to say we brought up the whole scene with Haru and her grandfather. I am so glad they showed that off. That is something that the game really needed for us to actually see like the whole idea behind like like you know her grandfather, how he ran the shop, how he ran Akuma Foods. How basically it led to the point of basically the shop not really making much money because he was being so charitable. And hell, even that scene, that whole idea of Akumura crying tears of joy after the grandfather, after like Haru's grandfather passed away and him gaining the rights of the company. Holy fucking shit, what a scumbag. Yeah, well, like he was just waiting for his dad to die just for him to get the money. But. Or at least get money. <laughs> but, as Zachary can attest here. They also make Akumura very much redeemable with the, with his shadow at the very end. Oh, they they did that scene pretty damn well, I must yeah, say. Yeah, they did that very well. I, 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 yeah, yeah, I will say this. It's so much better than the game because in the game, he's just like, my utopia. Dice. But in, yeah. he, but in here, he's literally, his last words and thoughts are of Haru. Mm -hmm. like, it's of Haru and just pretty much the things of what could have been. Yeah, yep. what it's like he like he was given another chance to basically he was given a chance to make things right with his daughter and it was taken away from him. And the dude in the black mask kills her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, cause, yeah, because it's like because he's like I'll turn over a new leaf and stuff like that. And, and then, then bang. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah about, about, about. I have to say that Har like Akuma's shadow going out for to me actually felt a little more squeamish simply because of the fact that we actually did see him go clop. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and we saw the blood and we, we also just blood. saw him literally die. Yeah, literally <laughs> smiling. Instead of just being a little farther away and then him just evaporating into black. Uh, oh, no, 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 he, he really uh uh, goes into black after the man in the black mask uh, shoots him in the head. Yeah, like, after in the game, like, he gets shot again, and that's what fully kills him. But here, the shot was enough to put him down, and just seeing Akumara smile talking about what could have been, oh, it hurts, because it really gives you the impression that if he was alive, he would actually be making an effort in rekindling his relationship with Haru. Granted, mm -hmm. behind bars, likely, but still, he would be a changed man. No, he, unfortunately, people with that kind of, CEOs with that kind of power, they don't go to jail. No, oh, it, it, oh, it, it, right. more likely than not, Okumura Foods would be disgraced, and they would probably go out of business. There's, there's no way he'd be able to stay in business, at least with that name anymore. So they'll probably just lose the house, by all means. 
there. Yeah, another but... possibility is that they would be forced to sell and he'd have to create a new startup. Yeah, but you want to yeah. know what? I don't think he would have cared. It's like at that point, he pretty much made it clear anything is worth, like, you know, anything any anything he loses at that point is worth it just to rekindle with his daughter. Yeah, it would have actually been, like, a really nice atonement. But I think that's what really emphasizes the scene really well. It's just the whole idea of what could have been. It makes, it hurts so much because... <laughs> Okumura is literally like tell like you know literally atoning like you know letting everyone know what had happened in a press conference and everything and then the mental <laughs> shutdown happens I fucking love the fact they gave Haru such a strong reaction because in the game she was so subdued but in the animation holy shit yeah like she was scared out of all that while in the game she was just like father oh I gotta go call them and I'm just like your father just fucking died on national television. Uh, and, and, and this time he dies by falling backwards and not flat on the desk. That's still pretty, that's still, that's worse if you ask me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I that's... actually think that him falling on the desk and then springing up is actually far worse than him choking and falling over, to be honest. Well, the I thing is, you just see him extent. look up with those dead eyes. Oh yeah. They're well, I think I think that they're both very effective. Well, I mm -hmm. think this one's just as bad, primarily because we see him being affected by it, him coughing up whatever that black substance is onto the press conference table before looking at the cameras and then just falling backwards, clenching his heart. And, and 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 right and right before he dies. Granted, this is in the game, but it didn't ha it didn't happen, you know, at the same time as the press conference uh, goes on. But uh, but uh, but at this, you know, right before he dies, uh, you hear the the SUI uh yeah SUI guy uh, talk. Yeah, oh, yeah, did. that was a nice touch. That I, was. I'm glad they did that. That was because right after he brought that, right after he brought up what he was talking about, that's when Akumura's mental shutdown happened, and it's like fucking mm -hmm. hell i yeah. only have one problem with the scene and it's just simply because of how, but it's ultimately just because it's a stylistic choice aren't people supposed to die immediately when their shadow is killed well, it, well uh, that's it, always been a problem uh -huh. well then again it could be heavily implied that the press conference happened not too long after the shadow was killed yeah, yeah, I know. It's like, it bugged me in the game, and it still bugs me here. It's no less shocking, but at the same time, if I sit down and think about it, I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, well, that... yeah let, let's get this out of the window first. Um, the thing is about the game, if you are if you manage to complete the palace, like, within uh, a day or day. two, Okumura is just stuck basically dead for, like, a month until the time runs out. <laughs> And there's no real explanation why. <laughs> exactly. It's just like everyone just thinks like, oh, that happens to all them, the people that we change the hearts of. It just takes them time to recover. Yeah. I'm at least glad in the anime that it happens like the very next day because it's just like, all right, that's fairly re more reasonable, I guess. I mean, it should have been instantaneous, but... Well, it's better than waiting a month until he actually kicks it. Uh, sp and speaking of, and speaking of dates, um, Cole actually pointed this out, uh, pointed this out to me. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, they changed the date for the deadline in the anime. Yeah, they moved it up two weeks again. Yeah, but oh. then it, yeah, but then again, I don't think it all. I don't think it really matters all that much because the anime doesn't really keep us in track in you know on track with what the current date is and such. Yeah, we know. We yeah. just thought it was an. We just noted it as an observation. Yeah. I wonder if they'll update the dates and uh, if they ever do a re-release for that. That'd be great, actually. We'll have to hmm. see. But along, oh. but along with that, we also got to see the group like actually hanging out in Destiny Land. Like we actually see them fully hanging out in Destiny Land again. As Cole said, us seeing them being actually friends and not just you know coincidentally hanging out and shit. And someone kind of pointed this out on the uh, Discord group that I actually run for Persona 5. Um, Futaba's height doesn't seem to be consistent. <laughs> um, is there a comparison that was made? Huh? Uh, like, um, like compared to what? It's just, no, just, just her... Futaba's height in general. <laughs> like, he's changing episode to episode. Oh, I, oh yeah, because... Yeah, in the game, she's just really short. Um, but there's like one scene where she actually looks about as tall as Makoto. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, like, Jesus. <laughs> they don't have a height chart, it looks like. 
Uh, <laughs> but... And I even noticed this even as early as when Futaba first comes into the cafe. It's like, Futaba, you grew six inches. <laughs> <laughs> growth spurt. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, 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 that was growth spurt. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking, speaking, of difference, uh, speaking of differences, um, uh, 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 I don't know. I, I know how Cole feels about this. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, uh, but right before they fight Akumra, they completely cut out the bit where he tries to trick a uh, harder win Morgana. I honestly don't mind that. I honestly don't mind that too much because um, the reason why I don't mind it is because at this point Haru's resolve is supposed to be strong enough that she's going to stop her father no matter what. That scene was completely unnecessary in the game and such. It it's like no, no, this this wouldn't work, and Haru should know better. It's also completely uh, unnecessary. When, when he especially tries to deal on Morgana, it's just like, we were just over this. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? And that's yeah. actually something that always kind of bugged me a little bit with Haru's arc. It feels like um, they didn't feel like they could trust themselves on how to write Haru properly, so they kept squeezing Morgana's problems <laughs> into there. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like sometimes these guys don't know how to write their women. Oh, <laughs> oh come on. Oh. I'm, that I, was I'm just sorry. mean. Yes, it was. I apologize par partially, but uh, I continue. Yeah. But it's like, but I stand by my. But in all seriousness, I stand by my statement that it feels like a lot of the time it felt like they had to put Morgana in there just because they didn't complete. Just because, and probably because Haru was introduced so late, they weren't fully sure how to handle everything with her. Yeah, I could under. Yeah. I could kind of get that as well, but. Anyways. Yeah, but uh, the, that's the great thing that I do have with this episode is the fact that they do keep the focus on Haru because a lot of the dialogue that does happen is spoken by Haru and do, does talk about her in detail, which I'm grateful for. Which I'm very happy for as well. And I also have to say I like how the animation made Haru's death player look more like a death player as opposed to a pout in the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, 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 by the way, Nelson, I know, I know. There's one comparison you're gonna hate me for uh, for bringing up. What? Um, uh, Haru making a request on the website. On well, the that's site. not really a difference, as it is just something that Cole brought up and they established later. I mean, it breaks Wait. everything I said in episode twenty, and it breaks the the, the idea I had in episode twenty, which I still think would have been a better idea. But you know what? Fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> Though now that I think about it, okay, so let me see what if I understand this. She made the request on the website because she was suspicious of her father, but she wasn't sure until she entered the palace that made her more even that made her want to understand more about what was going on with her father. So did she make the request after she met Morgana? But that doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna yeah. stop thinking. Yeah, that's I... kind of that's kind of the confusing part. If that line wasn't put in there, I think what I said before would have made more sense. But because they put the line in there, it kind of just stems back to the way the game handled it. Yeah, I wasn't sure about exactly what they were going for in terms of that. Because like, I just assumed she just she had her suspicions like way before. She just never sent it because, well, she wasn't e either sure or she was doubting herself. But I'm not entirely certain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think there's many other comparisons we need to bring up at this point. I think we've covered the bulk of them. Um, well, yep. Mm, uh, yeah, I think I covered my um, my big one, which was uh, just how they handled the palace itself. Yeah. Um, and this and this isn't really a uh, this isn't really a comparison. Um, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but it does make, uh, I guess you could say the cash up here go, ooh, I wonder what's gonna happen next, uh, uh, at the post credit scene, where at the very end you see Sai's eyes go red. Oh, that was red. <laughs> that was, that was, but then again, that was very sim similar to the game as well. Even though we don't see her eyes, we do hear her conviction in her voice about how she's not gonna let anyone else capture them, that it's up to her to catch the Phantom Thieves. You know, I, I, would have made it even more awesome if they actually turned yellow instead. Oh, that would have been <laughs> excellent. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. That would be excellent. <laughs> that, that would be, honestly. But, 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 none, but nonetheless, mm, I, it's, it's like her desires are distorted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, but nonetheless, it was still a really nice touch. Yeah, so anyways, I think we can move on to the final part of this, which is... Is this a good episode for fans and casual watchers? I'm interested to hear what y'all say. So, Dean? Hmm, I'm 
Okay, uh, for casual watchers, I think they'll enjoy this episode just fine because they, <laughs> if they were interested in Haru before from the previous episode or her amassing appearances before, I think they'll definitely get their fill and probably get to know her a lot better. Uh, probably a lot more than folks who played the game, honestly. <laughs> um, I feel like I feel like I know Haru better here. I feel that way too, and I I don't know how to feel about that, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear that. Uh, uh, but I think they'll they'll enjoy it, especially just from what happens in the end, because this is a pretty dramatic like episode all things considered in terms of its plot line and it's definitely the ending and not to and, mention the next episode's name literally being called is this our fault yeah so i think folks will be on the edge of their seats if they don't know the context for it which i'm you know more than happy for um so, as... so, so more likely more likely than that they might immediately jump into the next arc yeah i i, I have that feeling um, but uh, as for folks who have played the game, um, Haru fans rejoice. You finally got the attention for your waifu that you guys deserved. So props to you for that. Um, granted, I'm not I, sure. Oh, go ahead. If I could say, granted, I feel like they could have maybe done a little more, but I will say they did a lot better compared to the game. Yeah, that that's definitely the case for me because, like we said earlier, this palace kind of felt more like, oh, this is Morgana's time to shine just because we need him to, you know, feel resolved and whatnot. Oh, 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 how, oh, how convenient! He was able, he was able to push the button with his slingshot. <laughs> and, well, uh... Yeah, and he literally <laughs> said, "Like, wow, I hit it!" Like he honestly Wait, thought go he was... me. <laughs> like he thought he was gonna miss. Yeah. That, yeah, but that's the that, thing that I like most about this episode, speaking as someone who has played the game, is that they actually do provide the attention to Haru, who much more deserves it than Morgana, in all honesty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we learn a lot about Haru's backstory, her grandfather, and otherwise, which was needed because this kind of stuff was only really talked on or even touched upon from her confidant in-game. Yeah, and, and her, seeing... Oh, go ahead. And her confidant requires max proficiency, which is a pain in the ass to get. <sighs> yeah, and if you're like me, who did not care about proficiency in the slightest, I missed out on Haru's story. <laughs> and use case to an extent. And use case, but I, I feel more shamed about that, honestly. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, before I piss off the Haru fans more... Um, the, but the thing is about the overall opinion about like folks who have played the game, I'm honestly not sure because again, I said this before, this isn't like the most well liked palace. So will folks be happy that the palace is abridged, or will folks be mad that they missed out on some of the good parts? I'm kind of mixed on that, and I think that's how uh, Fantasy Persona Five will feel. <laughs> it's both a good and a bad thing. Yeah. It is, because I love the set pieces that this palace had, so <laughs> that's just kind of uh, the double-edged sword with this thing. You don't get as much as well as you miss out on things that were necessary. I- I'll say once, I'll say, uh, and I'll say again, it wasn't really that fun, the game, but this seems like a thing that, that would translate so much better to animation. It really would, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but and- yeah. those are my thoughts. Anyways, Cole? I think casual fans are genuinely going to enjoy this episode. But with that said and done, I think I can see some of them being annoyed of us adding another member so late into the anime. 21 episodes in. Yeah, 20 to 21 episodes in. But I will say right here and now, I think that a lot of people are definitely going to like Haru, whether it's for her design, for her us finally knowing what the deal with her is, or just her entire story in general. Yeah, Haru felt like one of the most... I, I don't want to say entirely a missed potential, but there were things they could have done better for her. I was very interested in her from the trailer, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, for her to appear so late and the fact that we didn't get entirely a focused episode... I mean, focus her in the game was a little disappointing, in all honesty. At, at the very least, uh, at the very least, I think casual fans will like your Phantom Thieves design. And, 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 and also the way she just does... Uh... Uh, uh, I guess you could say dramatic uh, things while in the uh, while in the palace, like oh, the and are all and are all out attack. Um, animation is just fucking yeah, that, perfect. Yeah, that's what is. I'm curious about because I'm curious on like folks' reaction if they haven't seen the trailer about 
how, what is Haru's all-out attack? And by God, thank God they chose the best one for <laughs> the show again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just start drinking coffee and just going adieu. adieu. Yeah. Like, Haru's entire Phantom Thief getup is just wonderful because it's all frilly and it's pink and her weapon's an axe and her gun is a grenade launcher and she can slay you, flay you alive and have a nice spot of tea on the, while she's at it. I mean, you saw her persona. It has guns under the skirt. <laughs> Mini <laughs> guns at that. Yep. So this one is tight. Like real talk, oh. like when I really, like real talk, like when I really started to use Haru and level up her persona, she became a pretty strong mainstay in my party simply because of the fact that she learns one shot kill. Yeah, that ab- oh, that ab- yeah, and if you keep and if you keep her with the ability snipe, it basically makes it that she can crit almost all almost half of the time. And it yeah. doesn't help either that there's that gun has the least amount out of personas that are resistant to it. You can literally flay anything alive. Yep, that's why I love uh, both one shot kill and triple down. Is She's this, just great with that. Is this supposed to be symbolic or something? Well, it's, kinda, oh, it's, so, well, it's so pretty inside. Well, it's, it's like, supposed to eh. give the, it's supposed to give the idea that yeah, every like everything about her looks pretty, and she also has a very calm demeanor. Demeanor, but it also kind of gives the idea that she won't hesitate to end you. Yeah, Haru is Jesus. arguably the most feminine character in the game, but she will basically she's also the most dangerous. Yeah, Beware. exactly. You kick your ass. <laughs> exactly. Her calm basically hides a storm. Now, 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 now I want to hear her say that. I'm going to kick your ass. We already get something like that with the fucking Valentine's Day shit, remember? <laughs> please take my chocolate before I crush it. Yeah, or it, maybe it's, please take my chocolate before I crush you. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, she, thinking yeah, about just And the way she about says it, that like... line, too, because you could tell she was pissed. And she yeah. did that with a smile. Yeah, that's that's the thing that scares me the most. If you hear that soft voice and you see that smile and you hear her say that, I feel more terrified than I've ever been in my entire life. <laughs> the, 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 the tip, the tip on that, the tip on that is just you know her smiling while 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 her eyes is also twitching at the same time. Oh God! <laughs> I get to, like and the worst part is I could see someone in real life doing that same shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is why this is why everyone says it's always the quiet ones. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's always the quiet ones you gotta look out for. But anyways, Cole, is there um is there anything else you wanted to add? Uh for casuals I'm pretty good. Uh for Persona Five fans though, um I actually have to be honest, this is probably a skip for, in my opinion. Oh really? Like, really? Yeah, hmm. like the thing is is that for all the little extra things that they add, they can, they remove so much stuff at the same time that we're basically on we we're basically getting the clip show version of the game. Yeah, and this is what I was this is what I mean like I was going to say this at one point to ya before the podcast, but I'll say it on podcast right now. This episode is rushed, but it does have some solid elements. This is... Yeah, and that was the the thing. Oh wait, uh, it's okay if I could say my piece, right? Go ahead. Um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay, that was the thing that I uh, I did like about this episode is that yeah, there were parts that were rushed about it, like they did skip over like pretty much all the palace. But I think that for me at least, the stuff that was new, especially like establishing Haru's story, for me made up for it. Mm. But then again, I kind of missed out on a lot of Haru's story, but I'm pretty glad to actually get to know Haru within this episode. Yeah, like, I did do... It took me until New Game Plus, but I did do Haru's confidant, and so I guess that's probably also why for me it's a skip, because I already know all this stuff for Haru, and for me, I don't need it repeated, but I guess if you are a fan but you never got a chance to do Haru's story, definitely, to play with Haru's story, definitely give it a watch. For me, though, it's probably not going to be an episode I come back to, but it's not an episode I hate. Hey, 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 here's the thing. I'll pro- here's the thing. I'll probably come back to the episode, but not to like watch the whole thing. Only to watch certain parts of it. Well, hmm. with that, well, with that said, give your thoughts then, Zachary. Um, when it comes to casual watchers, uh, they'll probably like uh, the episode, or 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 or, or not. You know, you know, you know, depending on uh, who you ask, because I'll like to introduce Haru. Um. 
but uh, but uh, but uh, but I fight you know I think they'll like it. Uh, uh, you know, when it comes to, like uh, ha- uh, Haru and such, they might get that. They they might get that feeling that something is off because of how quickly they go through the palace. I won't deny it. But but uh, but uh, but I could just imagine casual casual fans being being absolutely shocked by the death of Akumara. Yeah, that ending was definitely one hell of a way to end an episode. And honestly, mm-hmm. I think casual fans will get the same reaction that the people that did play Persona of. Like, we knew it was going to happen, but when it finally did, we were all just like, holy fucking shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, though I will say this, uh, though I will say this, when Akumara Shadow first dies, uh, first dies in the game, um, even though I was shocked, I didn't really feel that much because he wasn't that sympathetic to begin with. I think the uh, the scene where he actually did get killed and the <laughs> fact that he wanted redemption from that actually did help that for me, at least yeah. in the anime's case. The, ga- yeah. the game, though, uh, well, yeah. he was still kind of a dick. <laughs> yeah, 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 because he actually got shot the first time. He was just like, my utopia. It's like, dude, my yeah, utopia. Dude didn't care at all. Yeah, and yeah. whereas in the anime, his last thoughts were of Haru, like I said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and left, that died. Left yeah, laughing together. Jesus, that that still hurts. <laughs> yeah, and him saying that while smiling. Yeah. While while you see him, cry, uh, while you see tears go down. Oh, um, but uh, as for Persona Five fans, ooh, this uh, this is gonna be a tricky one. This really is gonna uh, uh, depend on uh, uh, depend on who you ask. On one hand, they you know you know, you know they could like it for for all the little stuff they end. But I could totally. But on the other hand, I could totally see him not liking it for how it, for how it's, uh, for how it's rushed, and uh, and and other things like that. So when it comes to Persona Five fans, it really does depend on who you ask. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. As for my thoughts on this, I do think casual fans will get some enjoyment out of this because they get to learn more about Haru's backstory, about the entirety of Akumra of the lineage of Akumra Foods. And not to mention, we get to exactly see the power of her persona. And even then, like I said, a lot of the scenes that they added and otherwise do make us feel more sympathetic, not just for Akumara himself for losing his life the way he did, but also for Haru because, think about it, we don't, like, you know, we can confirm this right now, she doesn't have a mother, she only has her father, so, yeah. Yeah, actually, come to think of it, like, I just noticed this now. We never talked about Haru having a mom. Yeah, well, that's why I'm bringing it up now. And it's like, yeah, she basically lost her only parent at this point. Granted, Haru is technically an adult. I mean, she's a third year in high school, so she has to be, like, on the borderline of becoming 18. But Technically, she still has until 20 until considered an adult in Japan. Okay, fair enough, but you get what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Does... does, uh... Do they even mention her mother in the game? I don't think they do. I don't think so either. Not really. I, th- I think there's a passing mention of her having passed away, but that's about it. Yeah, I think yeah, I, I think I remember. I think Okumura himself said I don't remember. I, 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 and I come to think of it, on this episode when they br- when they briefly show uh, Haru's bedroom again, when you see the when you see the picture, I don't think you see a picture uh, uh, of the mother in that group shot. It's very likely, then, that she probably died really young or even in childbirth. Yeah, Yeah. that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I could see that, quite honestly. But that's what I'm I'm trying to say. Like, it really makes you you feel bad for horror because now she has to... Because let's face it, anybody that suffers a mental shutdown dies, basically. Yeah, there's no dies, go insane, or comatose. Either way, yeah, Haru's pretty much like on her own now, and that's pretty horrible to think about. Or 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 or, or, or gets hit by oncoming traffic. Oh, stop it! Oh, god damn it! God damn it, Zach! <laughs> that happens twice. As for um, as for fans, oh. Ooh. If, if it, we're if all like, very divided on this one. Oh. Casual, it's easy, but with fans, it's been tricky. Oh. Yeah. I, 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 now that I think about it, I, I think I think this is very hard to recommend to fans. Honestly, yes, I don't think fans would like this episode. Primarily because, as Cole said, a lot of the information you learn in this episode is 
been there, done that, if you're already a fan of Persona 5, and have either played um, to the point that you'd finish Harvest Confidant, or watched it, like I did. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of why I kind of split my thing into, go ahead and give it a shot if you haven't done Haru's Confidant, because the requirement for it's so high that most aren't going to. But then again, you have people who don't have the attention span to play a game 100 hours again, so they exactly. might... They might just watch it on YouTube just so they can understand the full story. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the problem. It's the same kind of problem I had to with episode 14 with Makoto's story, where you could literally just watch it on YouTube and get a far better story compared to the episode that pretty much tries to cover her confidancy. And a much more satisfying conclusion to her decision on what to do uh, when he get into college. God damn it, don't make me bitter again. <laughs> I'm making you bitter again because I have to have someone who suffers with me. Uh, <laughs> just, but, just remember, she wants to be a cop. Uh, stop <laughs> it. But anyways, in terms sure. of... Sure, and I'll, I'll expect Haru to want to work at Starbucks when she grows up. I'll say it like this. If you like if you're if you like Haru in any kind of way as a fan then I could see you enjoying this episode to some degree but for everybody else this is a hard pass this is a very hard pass because this episode doesn't really establish all that much and really the only important bits that you need to pay attention to is the ending but even then if you're a fan you already know what happens so I can't. Re I can't remember the last episode we talked about where we were where we were really mixed on it. <laughs> yeah, I feel that our opinions are all over the place with this one. <laughs> yeah, but then well, again, well, 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 then again, the episode itself is kind of all over the place. Yeah, exactly. I don't degree, think yeah. this. I don't think this episode's bad. I just think it's like a it's a real mixed bag. It's a mess. Yeah. It, it yeah. just depends on what you expect out of this episode and what because... you're looking to get out of it. Yeah, so there are things that I personally do appreciate more from this episode because they do keep it where it needs to be, in my opinion, for Haru's sake. Mm -hmm. But I do understand where you guys are coming from with this because, well, yeah, they could have like spent a lot more time detailing certain things, which I agree with. So yeah, if you ask me, if you're not, if you're not really interested in Haru's story or you don't already know it... I'd only watch this if you if you like Haru as a character. Otherwise, this is a serious hard pass. Because not much changes in terms of story, and the few things that they removed were key details that not only progressed Haru's character and conviction to stop her father, but it also gave us the it gave us the idea of how much of a monster Okumura was. It should really say something. It should really say something that the father gets more development. Yeah, if I have to be, <laughs> if, if, like honestly, I w I'm not gonna call this palace a uh, another another um another fail. I'm only gonna call this palace a missed opportunity because there were a lot of points they could. There were a lot of things they removed that unfortunately lessened the. Uh, the impact but then they added a few more things that really made me sympathize more and otherwise that's why i say if they were to have the boiler scene along with all this new stuff this would be a solid palace yeah i think i think this is kind of a case of like they took two steps forward but they also took two steps back yeah so they're basically like right back where they started <laughs> well, like, like 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 only had to they 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 could they could have only spent like one or you know one or two minutes on the boy room and that would have been perfectly fine. Yes. Yeah, I could see where they could have like made some additions here and there. Like if, say, Haru was actually talking about like how much like any of the rules that it, her father uh, placed on them, and then it sort of like did show it in the palace, like what you know symbolically on what it affected, how it affected. Her, um, in fact, workers. if we were to make a change, in fact, here's one change. Imagine if she talked about how different her, her father and her grandfather handled their business etiquette when she got to the boiler room. Like thinking mm -hmm. back, like thinking back to her father, thinking back to her grandfather, and then relating it to how her father currently sees her their workers. That would have been like, like not even say anything else after that. Just have that be her final conviction to stop her father. Yeah, they could have done something else like. Um, you, they don't have to show directly on how much, like, Okumura, like, mistreats his workers. You could easily just show, like, a scene of 
basically the workers on how much they're being like enslaved, working as robots with all these unreasonable hours and whatnot. Even showing a glimpse of like if Haru was talking about her father, while also showing a scene of inside the palace of the workers being mistreated. Exactly. That I think would have been fine. Yeah. Uh, also, I just realized this, but they make such a passing barely acknowledgement of Akumara's treasure, whereas yeah, in the game they did oh, kind oh, of yeah. point out how it was such an odd deci- odd treasure. I was I was, I was about to say they I was about to say I care if this happens in the game, but they completely gloss over the treasure this time around. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like one of the most interesting ones I feel because you wouldn't expect like the treasure to be a model playset of a spaceship. Yeah, because all the other ones, it was like, it's an Olympic medal, it's the Sayuri, it's money, or something to hold money in, and then it's a toy spaceship that he wanted as a kid but couldn't get because he was broke. Why is it that pretty much all of these palaces seem to involve being being afraid of being in poverty? Oh, 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 oh you got the most important one. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, treasure was an actual person. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, Futaba Futaba. was the treasure. <laughs> oh yeah, but... I still wonder if that's only because she entered her own palace. No, I think I, it, think... I, th- I think that I think that was the case no matter what because the treasure was inside of a freaking coffin. Yes, yeah, our coffin. Oh, so it would have been a Futaba mummy. Oh god. <laughs> uh, I don't want to think about that, please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ex- I'm so sorry. Yeah, exactly. But anyways, I think that's where we're gonna end it for now. We're about an hour in. Um. This definitely rivals up there in our top five longest, but yeah, we had plenty to talk about in this one. And depending mm-hmm. on uh, and depending on the next episode, which we all know what's coming up, we're probably gonna have a lot more to talk about. Oh yeah, yeah, it, yeah. This is only one of those episodes where where it's just like this isn't like a best of, but it's not like a worst of either. It's like straight down the middle. I can it's see straight down the middle and kind of a, I guess in a more discussive way. <laughs> I could see this maybe hitting the um, honorable mentions of least favorite, but I don't know. I honestly don't know, quite being fair. But oh, any- that's, it has a couple of episodes to beat, so. Well, I said yeah. honorable mention, not into the top five. Point For me. Uh, given how much Persona 5's anime actually really likes going for low, I it for me that would be a hard sell to convince. Well, we'll have to see. But anyways, <laughs> with that said, what do you think about our thoughts on this episode? Found a comparison that we didn't talk about? Disagree with us in any kind of way? Go ahead and leave your comments down below and we'll discuss it in the comment section. And we will see you all for episode 22 literally being called, Is This Our Fault? No, no it is our yes. fault. Yes. Nope. <laughs> Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow, Cole. Wow. Well, 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 the years that watched, that watched the episode, no, it wasn't their fault. Oh, all right. Well, uh, I guess good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, that... till next time, I'm Keen 47 a.k.a. Wolfkeen, along with... I am DM Ikami, says DM Boon 3000. I am Florin G, the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Mario Fanboy 15 and the next episode should be called, Is It the Black Mask's Fault? <laughs> Well, they don't. Well, they don't know what happened. If you realize, I don't, I don't. That's the whole point. It's like, well, we'll get into that when the next episode rolls through. So, <laughs> hey, I'm trying to avoid having to censor myself. Hey, oh. everybody, the person who the black mask is. See you later.